I'm Paul McGuire. In Genesis chapter 6, we read something that is intensely interesting. In Genesis chapter 5, we read that genetically, Adam and Eve were made in the image of God. And that means their DNA, DNA code came directly from God. And by the way, Adam and Eve didn't experience death until after they sinned. They would live forever. After the fall of mankind, the average lifespan was 900, 800 years. It was just a universal. After the flood of Noah, there was tremendous atmospheric changes and the average lifespan began to be about 175 and then 100 something years old. Now in Genesis chapter 6, we read something very interesting. We read about fallen angels who are attracted to the daughters of men. In other words, fallen angels who are sexually attracted to human females. And they actually bred. Now, this is not some esoteric, bizarre interpretation of Genesis chapter 6. The interpretation that I gave you was the predominant interpretation of many seminaries uh, and theological institutions for centuries. It's only recently that they got rid of that. Also, it's the predominant interpretation by rabbinic scholars. These fallen angels mated with human women and produced offspring, the interbreeding of species. Except here we have the interbreeding of the fallen angel, who is a demon, and his genetic code merging with a human woman. The offspring was called the Nephilim. Now the Nephilim, they were giant, they were the giants of old. And there you, you read about them all over the Old Testament. The, the giants of old, and they keep talking about giants. And they were like seven, eight, nine feet tall. In fact, David, when he confronted Goliath, Goliath was a Nephilim. He was the offspring of a fallen angel and a human mother or at least he came from that line. So Goliath was a Nephilim, and they populated the earth to quite an extent. But they were the result of an interbreeding of um, demons and human women. Now, let's flash forward. Today you keep hearing uh, talk about UFOs. The Vatican uh, announced a year ago that they believe that there, there's a high probability of life on other planets. The United Nations has recently uh, appointed an ambassador to greet aliens. Uh, Bill Clinton was interested in investigating them, Ronald Reagan was, and numerous other presidents. But there's an entire history, uh, largely hidden, of our government's interactions with alien beings and technology or spacecraft. Now these alien beings are either fallen angels or demons using technology or they're the descendants of a, ma of a mating between a fallen angel and demon and a human woman producing an interbreeding transhuman if you will race but it's a demonic race and it, it will be used for uh, Satan's dark purposes. Now, this part is theoretical. There are people that claimed, it's not theoretical, it's a, it's a, it's a body of scholars who embrace this idea. They believe that God destroyed the earth with the flood in Noah's time because the earth was exceedingly wicked and they were evil and the thoughts of men's heart were evil continually and God was sorry for what he had made and so he sent the flood to to wipe them out in an act of judgment but think in terms of genetics he had Noah build an ark and he had two of every kind of species come aboard the ark it was a massive ark now why would God have two of every species come into the ark 
and just a select handful of men and women who would later reproduce. And God wipes out the entire human race and the animal kingdom, etc., etc. Why? It was for genetic purification. It was because the alien seed produced the Nephilim and satanic purposes were being birthed through that interbreeding, that transhumanism of alien and man. So when we look at the story of Noah, we can't just think of the story of a guy in a boat while, while, while the earth uh, is flooded. There's a DNA code, genetic message, embedded all over that story. But you wouldn't be able to understand that until the last hundred years where, you, where scientists understand the genetic code and the purpose of DNA. So, the flood subsides, uh, the human beings repopulate the earth, and a new race of men is bred. Now, the scripture in Genesis 6 seems to indicate that all of mankind was wiped out except for Noah and his family. And this part is speculative. I'm not saying it's, it's a fact. But there are some people who believe that fallen angels in Nephilim knew this flood was coming and they buried themselves, they put themselves deep beneath the earth under giant mountains or up in mountains in freezing temperatures in Antarctica and other places and they froze their bodies in suspended animation and if you were to find them, they, they're perfectly intact. And there are people who claim, and I don't know if the claims are true, that they are trying to resuscitate these beings, the Nephilim or the fallen angels that were frozen in the ice, because of, of a special purpose that they have. Now, the aliens seem to have a remarkable similarity in description between the fallen angels and the Nephilim. What if our earth in, in that time, remember prior to the flood of Noah there were six billion people on planet earth. Prior to the flood of Noah mankind was had a very technologically advanced civilization. We have no idea the technology, the mathematics, the science at, at what a high level it was operating at prior to the flood of Noah. We have an idea that everybody but he was running around with loincloths. That's not true. There was six billion people. It was a highly sophisticated culture. And if it is true that uh, cities like Atlantis did exist, legend has it, and this, and this legend was passed on by the Greek and Romans, Plato, etc., of Atlantis. A, a super civilized city. So here we are in the last days and we see the return of transhumanism, interbreeding of species, the interbreeding again of alien or fallen angel and demon and human being. This is going to take us into the tribulation period but we're entering a period in human history where men, you're going to meet men and women who have been cloned, who have been genetically altered, and it, it will be the norm. And some will be cloned human beings. And you're going to live in a world where these people walk and exist among you. And some of these beings, these transhuman uh, beings, will be the result of advanced manipulation of the DNA codes, the breeding of the DNA of the Nephilim or the fallen angels, animals, computer systems, and uh, women. It's a, it's a strange place we live in, but that's where we are. I'm Paul McGuire.